Hey, what's up, folks? This is the Knights of the Venge Table, and uh, we know it's been a little while, but we had a lot of stuff happen with Beyond Light, Day One, Rage, Trials, Cancellations, Bugs, Holidays, and so much more stuff. So this might be a slightly long episode, but that's okay, because it's going to be a fun conversation. So today I'm joined by Stealth O Viking, WRB Goalkeeper, Lou underscore TV, and King of Hearts, and this is, of course, your your f friendly YouTuber person, Church of Caboose. So, hi, so how are you guys all doing? Right. I'm doing well. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah. good. Pretty yeah. good. So, so, so I uh, thought we could kick this off on the opposite of what lots of folks are doing, which is how badly they think Beyond Light sucks. And I thought we could start <laughs> with things we like about it. What do you guys think? Sure. Sure. Yeah, why not? All right, so let's uh, let's start with uh, stealth. What's your? If you had to pick one thing that you love the most with Beyond Light, what is it? Honestly, mm -hmm. um, the thing I love the most is the new PvP. Oh, all right. I'm curious. Why is that? I see everyone hating it. So, uh, so exactly why do you because love of it? that. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know. It changes. It changes everything. Yeah, it changed. Uh, you know, a lot of how we react and how we've been playing for a while. And I think that it was a good thing, you know, to spice things up. Gotcha. So you just kind of like how it just made it where you don't get to do the exact same strategy over and over? Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I was hoping you were going to say it's because 600 RPM right, auto rifles got a tiny bit of a nerf. Oh, wow. I'm that's still getting killed by them. <laughs> <laughs> they left the 720s alone, though, which has been fun. How about uh, Goalkeeper? What's been your favorite thing? My favorite thing, I guess, is the farmability of this. Uh, I guess of this expansion with like the being able to do all the lost sectors for the exotics. The raid's really fun to farm for new gear and stuff, and all the little trinkets hidden all over Europa is fun to go try and find. Ah, uh, so you find it? It's fun because it's repeatable. Instead of doing something once, you can do it over and over and over. Yep. Gotcha. All right. How about uh, Loot TV? What do you love? Um, for me, I'd say that Stasis as a whole has been my major uh, favorite part of Beyond Light, mainly because it's new, it's innovative, I'm able to do a lot of different things I wasn't able to do in my Light classes. Um, yeah, it makes ad clearing fun. So what uh, what do you mean for the stasis then? Because I'm curious. What... Um, so story? I'm a hunter main. Um, I also sometimes use my warlock, but mainly I'm on my hunter. Um, so is, being is the able... warlock act clear more fun, or is the hunter act clear more fun? Because I was thinking you were gonna say it was the warlock. Mm, I love doing it on my hunter. To be honest, the shuriken are oh, okay. amazing. And being able to have my dodge also slow um, opponents is also pretty fun as well. Gotcha. All right. And, oh, shoot. King of Hearts, what was your uh, favorite part? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, um, just I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, honestly, I think my favorite part so far has been um, has been all the new lore that's been coming out. Like with the um, with the lament lore book, with the lore behind the raid, um, the penguin lore is phenomenal right now. I love it. And but yeah, I think honestly my my whole thing has been the the new lore that's been dropping. Gotcha. Well, for uh, for me, I guess that's something a little bit different. It'd be the quality of life stuff. Bringing even more. On December 8th. Apparently, we're going to be able with the companion app to grab bounties from vendors on the app. So you won't have to go to the tower every time you run out of bounties, which will be fun. But then the other stuff with like better graphics and how quests are laid out. I think Eververse seems like it's less money grabby. Like, for example, there was an emote for sale, I think it was last week that I didn't get because I was like, I'm not paying silver for that. And it was available for Bright Dust this week. So I think they're laying less into the the, the pay-to-play kinds of things and uh, up, upgrading that quality of life 
hope, hope I'm not the only one that feels like that. But that's why I, I've been digging. I guess that's different from everyone else. Stasis is a hoot, though. <laughs> yeah, I agree completely. Crucible, something else. <laughs> All right. So I guess on the other side, what's something you're not a fan of? It could be specific with a subclass or beyond light or anything with the game. What's something you're not a fan of? Let's go in the same general-ish order. So Stealth of Viking. Oh, you there? Hello. Oh, maybe not. It's okay. It's okay. King of Hearts. King of Hearts. We'll go backwards. We'll go backwards. <laughs> okay. Um, I think my biggest issue with the expansion right now is... I want to say the amount of server issues that I've been seeing. Because I've had... It, it's not been constant, but there have been several times that I've been playing where I just constantly see the... Uh, attention contacting destiny 2 servers message pop up on my screen for like an hour straight and then it'll go away and then it'll come back so i think that's oh, yeah, that, my biggest yeah. issue yeah there were, uh, is this still going on or is that more like the first week or so no like i actually i saw that as recently as like last week saturday oh damn it's like the first after the day one raid yeah that's uh that's, that's not fun. I haven't noticed it since the first week that much, but that, that would uh, definitely not be very much fun. That was you, goalkeeper, with something that you dislike. Mine has to deal with the raid. Uh, oh, okay. Mine is that <laughs> after the day one raid, day one raid, pretty hard with the survivability, but after day one, the raid has been a little too easy for my liking to be able to complete and stuff. So, so are you saying you're upset you can hop in with the LFG group and most likely be able to beat it without wanting to kill yourself? Yep. <laughs> it, this raid is not a hard one to teach. I can teach the raid pretty well, and it's, it doesn't take too long to teach. Like Crown of Sorrow, that one was a hard one to teach at the final boss encounter. Not to teach, but like to get up and going for uh, people who are doing it for the first time. But this raid, not that hard for people to pick up and do. The, the mechanics are fun, but it's a little. I feel it's sh a little too easy for. I should the first raid in a my, year. Uh, next teaching run, because every once in a while, I feel like I just get with folks that have a hard time doing a few things at once and knowing more than one set role. But hey, I'm glad uh, you feel that way. How about is Viking? Are you back yet? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, there we go. We can hear you now. We we couldn't hear you before. Was something you don't like with Beyond Light, or wish was di different or better or whatever? Uh, I think maybe to change that one a bit, I think the story could have been a little bit more, you know, decent. Because I felt it was just, you know, like very on rails. Uh, the, especially the part with, oh, uh, you, you are a coward, Barracks, and no, Aramis, you are the coward. I think that was just pretty much. You know. Gotcha. I was wondering if you were going to talk about uh, Aramis feeling like a villain of the week. I've heard a lot of people feeling like Aramis wasn't enough of the big bad baddie. So I was just curious if that was going to be why. That's like a like bunch of five-year-olds. No, you're the worst. You're the Yeah, pee exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're back. I don't like the most Beyond Light. I believe I'm going to share the same with uh, King of Heart. Mainly because uh, I load out of pretty much any activity I do. Um, it's recent Deep Stone Crypt um, clear. Um, during the boss, I had to do a few wipes because they kept kicking me out and having me come back in. It's been the most frustrating part. Um, other than that, I don't think I really have wipes. 
That damn arugula. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what? No, I was just making a... Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. I guess for me, my least favorite part was... Uh, I don't know if you guys did this, but I busted my tail off to get every pinnacle, every raid exotic, and then having folks where I can just go and buy not finally at least halfway decent again drives me insane. I'm like, come on! Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? So <laughs> maybe, as maybe a way to uh, get rid of a little bit of that anger, frustration at that. Maybe think of it as more of a uh, avenue for literal like new new players that like just started with Beyond Light to get some. Stuff. What? Well, um, there is a price to these guns that not just anybody can get them because you have to have ascendant shards to buy them, which you know. It's an end game material, so not anybody yeah, can just buy the gun. Yeah, but when they have um, double nightfall rewards really early, it's not that hard, you know? Because then you just find some friends and you just stick it out in a master nightfall. Like, you'll get it. You'll get it. Like, it's not too bad. If they yeah. had waited, like, halfway through, if it was, like, January, for example, and then it was, like, double rewards, I wouldn't have cared as much. Because <laughs> at first I was like, yeah, it'll take a while at least, not a big deal. And then they had double rewards after like the second or third week for the nightfall. And then I saw nothing but not forgotten in the crucible for a while. It's like, oh come on, <laughs> uh, it's more of a. Also, it's hard to re, uh, to uh, replicate the cost and, and frustration and energy of going through and earning it. Uh, at least, especially when it was first available, because like getting it when it was first available was way harder than when I got it. Um, yeah, so that, it's hard to replicate. Fair. It's like. It's hard to replicate that cost of time and dedication you put into it, and that's part of why folks have such issues with people paying for flawless runs. It's because people, like, for the most part, have to work their butts off to get like, the flawless titles and whatnot, and then you got folks that, like, well, I got an extra 400 bucks I don't care about, and now I got the title. It's kind of a similar-ish thing. There's obviously well, huge differences between the two, but in, in a way, there, there's some similarity. Uh, well, one anyway, thing that works great right. then is the fact that they put them in and you can actually get them without all that effort because that puts a hole in all the pay-to-win stuff. I mean, you cannot long you can no longer pay someone $400 for Mountain Top when you can, you know, just grind away and buy it, I don't know. In a That's true. Person. That's on the other side. There might be less people paying for those, and it might just be more of a trials thing. Uh, so, but let's <laughs> I love rabbit trails. I love my brain works in rabbit trails, and it's great. But every once in a while, someone comments in my video saying they're too rabbity. So, let's get back with uh, Beyond Light. How'd you guys like it and feel like the first week, for example, went? Um, if that, if that makes sense. Like, oh, I'll share kind of what I'm thinking. So that way it gives you guys a little bit of time. Uh, so, like, the first week it kicked off, everything's, like, brand new. And the first, like, I was playing it full-time because I took that, that first week off from work to play it full-time. Uh, and then after, like, two days, I was like, oh, my God, I'm farming the exact same missions over and over even once the campaign is done. And then I was like, why did I get all my loot sunset only to have a long shadow be the reward? for one of the campaign missions. Like, I thought we were getting a whole bunch of brand new gear. And so to some degree, I was like, God, oh, my goodness, it's so repetitive and not a lot. And then on the other hand, I'm like running around doing all these trans
and spawned her. Drones and penguins because I loved it that first week. So how do you, how'd you guys feel? Let's go with, uh, let's, let's do it different. Blue TV. Okay. Um, first week of Beyond Light for me, um, definitely was fun. I had started it on my Warlock instead of my Hunter because I wanted to switch things up a bit. I've done pretty much all of the previous campaigns on my Hunter first. So I just wanted a bit of a different perspective and I loved it. It was extremely fun for me. Um, being that, um, I know that other people have seen Aramis as kind of like a villain of the week type of thing, but being that I've been running zero hour for the past two months or so before it went away, uh, for now at least, um, seeing that her name being brought up in there and the things dealing with that a uh, quest finally come into the main light was something that I was looking forward to for sure. Um, everything dealing with the Bray family has been exquisite in my uh, view, my perspective, being that I like the lore um, of Destiny and everything like that. So yeah, I think those were the main things that I got from it. Um, just enjoying the experience, getting in there, learning more of the lore and um waiting for the more time gated content to come out so i could uh get into that uh with my fresh new eyes gotcha i i dig the having the story part tied in for folks because that's not really much my thing uh how about goalkeeper uh this I like the so far. I like Beyond Light. I did this one much different than other campaigns because getting ready for the uh, day one raid, I had to dust off my Titan and Hunter to get up to the power level, which I never do. I'm a mainly one character type person where I only use my Warlock for pretty much everything, which is why he has a 48 days of playing time on it. But he, it's just. I enjoyed the story. Eris Smith, like I agree with a lot of people, was a bit of a letdown, much like Zol was, with how easy they were to fight. Like Gaul <clears throat> felt like it was a little bit easier. Was a was an easy fight, but I felt like he was a harder boss than Aramis and Zol. So it's disappointing how these story bosses that have been hyped up have been a little bit weak in the end to fight, but. I like the story overall. It was a fun story to play. It was Forsaken esque where you had to go kill all the I don't know, his her minions, which I liked. It was a fun campaign to do that. But yeah. Campaign was short, fun to do. A little bit of a weak ending, but overall I liked the campaign. And then I just been having fun doing the farming and finding all the trinkets you have to do for the seals. Find that fun. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, for fine-tuned seal stuff than there has been in the past. Um, how about you, King? Uh, my first week was actually fairly chill. Um, I was actually I was still working normal hours when uh, Beyond Light actually came out, and actually was doing a lot of overtime that week. Um, but yeah, I was. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot, uh, even although I will admit that even to this point in time, I have not completed the campaign on my Hunter or Titan yet. <laughs> I've, only com I've only completed Same. it on my Warlock. Yeah. Uh, but, no, I um, it was a lot of fun. Um, I will disagree with you, Goalkeeper, on...
the on the. <laughs> uh, but yeah, otherwise though. It was. It was All good. Right. And uh, Viking, how about you, my friend? Well, uh, same as you, I actually had some days off, uh, you know, like extra ones, and I took some of them. And I felt that, uh, especially the campaign was uh, really grindy, but I was enjoying it. I mean, uh, a, bit, a little bit repetitive after a while, and I think that could have been, you know, mitigated with a little bit more of a. Um, uh, you know, cool missions like killing all the ca the captains and all that and all that stuff, and not having to do it right again just to get you know the good rolls for all the weapons, including the well in the season. And I actually spent a lot of time. Uh, well, it was more on the second week uh, with the season of the hunt stuff, uh, especially trying to get the Wrathborn kills and all that stuff that uh, practically everyone ignored over Beyond Light. Yeah, yeah, that's a, I, I kind of slept on that a little bit too. I waited till after the day one raid, or maybe it was right before, to max out my crow stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which I guess leads into the, oh, and the if, if you're wrapped up anyways, I'm sorry. Anything else you were wanting to add in there, Stealth? No, uh, I think that, that uh, pretty much covers all my bases. <laughs> all right, well, you kind of let in a decent segue. I was going to bring up uh, the season of the hunt at some point. What do you guys think about uh, the season of the hunt so far? I know there's more stuff coming, so hopefully, in my opinion, it gets better. But what do you guys think? Hopefully it will. <laughs> So we all kind of agree and it seems like really weird to have a whole season's like one activity and like it's just play the rest of the game and then do a, like a two minute hunt. Yeah. That is, that is a little weird, but I also really can't speak that much on season of the hunt because I've maybe done like two hunts so far. So, but otherwise, yeah, I do kind of agree that it seems it seems a little weird what they're doing with it but i also do like the um almost like the uh the chaliceness of the uh lure module i do like that uh, i'm fine i like the, i'm fine with the wrathborn hunts they're easy to do they're fun i like the story wise no i guess not the story wise but it's just how you have to go search for these wrathborn it, it, it's much better than season worthies, you know, tobacco with the public events and stuff. I really yeah, that, that, that is true. I really wish that the mods actually worked. Since usually you are, for example, the, the ones that oh, beat the Yeah, the one that like vetoes out the weapon perks. Some of yeah. those have been. Yeah, some mm -hmm. of those have been kind of bugged and not working, yeah. But I feel like if they if they fix when they fix them, that's a really good way to like farm for certain weapons that you want. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no. So I just have to check real quick. Uh, what part did I miss out on? Where when you got? Because I, I I lost audio, so I had to hang. He was talking about the the v, the veto mutations and how they weren't working completely. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yep. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> now you're no, fine. No. But, uh, but yeah, no, that, what you said there, Goalkeeper, though, it does, uh, kind of boot back into the idea that this almost feels like, maybe not like a natural progression of the Chalice, but a spin-off of the Chalice from Season of Opulence, where you can now, instead of just farming for, like, the specific weapon, you can also farm for the certain perks you want to be, you want to have on it. Which is cool if it works. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like cool menagerie. if it works. I just uh, wish you didn't have to wait for your rewards to rotate around enough. I oh, actually, you? I actually, I think, 
I think they're literally random every time you put in a hunt mutation. They are. So like once you complete a hunt, the rewards change. Yeah, so every time. You don't you don't you don't, you don't wait for them to change. You I guess you control for you control them when they change by doing a Wrathborn hunt. Yeah. So like uh, I just found it annoying when I was working on that warden title that uh, I had to do, I think it was like four or five hunts before I could get another Deafening Whisper over Cursair's Wraith. And so it was just mm. frustrating. Huh. I was like, I, I can't make progress till I get those. And I had to just hope that the RNG would make it where it was a reward. Granted, it's not like it's a whole lot of hunts and they don't take super long, but charging up, I'm not a huge fan of it being play of the game like you normally would to get like a three minute new activity. But yeah, that I is. Could just be picky. Yeah, that that I mean it is it is a little um it is a little odd that they decided to do it like that. But at the same time I could also see them No, I really actually can't see a reason why they would do that. Never mind. <laughs> well at some point in uh in the past they mentioned that super right, there's no reason to do core activities and so they're like, Okay, we hear you and so like now this is like the reason to do core activities is because you get rewarded for them because of the lure and then you get the random powerful rewards and so this is them giving you a reason to keep doing core activities is uh why is why i'm figuring huh. gotcha okay that, that that makes a little bit of sense but yeah it's I, shaky next season i feel like there it's gonna be even more your reason to do core activities since they're changing to more xp through activities instead of bounties Oh, yeah, when was next that season. announced? Uh, they announced it last Sorry. season towards the end as like a quality of life change. Oh, yeah, that's right. They were talking about trying to get away from the bounty grinding. That's right. Yep. That's right. And that would be very nice. It would be, because it would be, it would then, then with the random powerfuls that you're getting from the core activities. You're also now getting more experience, so your season pass is going up higher. So, yeah, because I don't farm a lot of bounties well. when I don't need to. The only yeah. bounties I farm are for the powerful gear, and when I don't need the powerful gear anymore, I don't do the bounties. Same. So, well, speaking of season and grinding and whatnot, how do folks feel about going for day one raid? I know Goalkeeper and I were on the same team trying to do day one. I know King went for it. Did anyone else try and do a day one clear? Of course I did. We yeah. did. I, know that. I don't yeah. know about stealth though. Alright, so for those that went for it, how did y'all feel about the power grinding compared to before? So... I... I definitely have never actually, like... Uh, seriously power grind for the day one clear because normally it seems like um, the raid is launched only like a couple days or something after the uh, expansion and normally I don't have enough time to seriously grind up but um, I but this season I did because I was able to get the second week off um but this year, it seems like it was actually, like, kind of, like, stupid easy to get up to the 1230, because by the end of the second week, like, I was just doing the normal powerful the and pinnacle drops, and, um, I, uh, I, w I had two characters at, at or above 1230 before the raid, like, before the end of the second week, even, like, or, like, just at the start of the second week, I was... I had two characters ready, and it was, it seemed like that, that didn't make a lot of sense to me, it almost seemed like I shouldn't have had that much power right then and there. Yeah, I can, uh, I, I could, I can see that. I had all three of my characters, quote unquote, raid ready after the first week. They are all high enough. Um, not like once contest is off, they weren't all high enough that first week, but... Uh, anyone else? Like, do you feel like it was e leveling was easier from before? This could also be not necessarily a reference to a day one raid, just from playing and just like powering up. Because I know folks try to power up to do end game as fast as possible. So, like, how would you guys feel in the leveling it worked? I felt the leveling was easier just because I knew from experience what the pattern was, how to do it. 
and using doing the pattern with just level up one character, move the weapons over, do the next character, get them higher, move it to the next character, get them higher, move those weapons back, the higher weapons back to your first character to bounce them out. It was just, gotcha. I just know from experience, it's just, it was just easy. Did it feel uh, maybe more engaging and more interesting in the past to try and power up, or is that maybe more from knowing it was for trying to do a day one raid? Uh, it was more just me trying to do the day one raid, uh, having to do, there was more activity, I guess. The new powerful rewards that you could have done those first couple of weeks weren't really that new and interesting. It was like, oh yeah, farm these bounties for barracks, get 100 stasis kills off of Europa. So, I thought that one like just launched though. It depends yeah. on how far you got through the various challenges and when you did them. Uh, I, I okay. forget because like some of it was locked. I know some of it you got. I want to see once the raid do activities for that. Um, this is my first time even doing a day win attempt, um, as well as power leveling to that. For me, um, like I said, I started on my warlock, but because I knew I wanted to be on my hunter for the day one, I had switched over and started working on her instead of the warlock. And um, it wasn't that hard. Um, I did. Uh, dabble in a bit of the exploit because I didn't want to waste too much time doing things that would burn me out for the playlist activities. Um, mm -hmm. But other than that, um, it was a pretty... I guess I could call it fun because I knew what I was trying to get to and um, encouraging my team to also get to that point was um, kind of like the collective goal. So, yeah, it wasn't that complicated. It's just a matter of knowing what to do. Gotcha. Well, have you, have you uh, beaten Prophecy the dungeon yet? Yes. Multiple times. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to be like, well, then we're going to have to get your happy butt through there. And, um, uh, I'm I... personally really glad I got my solo follows done before Stasis because uh, I think it'd be <laughs> less rewarding now if you can just freeze a whole room but anyways i also just wanted to brag again because i put a lot of work into that yeah <laughs> no nah, anyway. brag it up you, you did put a lot of work in that what was it like a hundred hours or something into yeah, about doing that. that one thing so i did the slow yeah. way other folks like uh polar on our clan when it's like i want to do solo fall and fall less and solo falls all at once where i was like i've never done a solo anything in game much less solo fall us i did first fall us with a team that I did, oh, like 50 hours to figure out how to be it solo. Then it's like another 40 to 50 to actually do it solo flawless. So it was, it was a long, it was like a, over a month, I think. Oh. Between the three. But anyways. Um, so with all of that goodness, and we have folks leveling up, and then the day one raid... Does anyone want to talk about how, if they went for a day one clear how they felt like that all went? Fuck Atrix. <laughs> Atrix was the bane of our day one. Chris yeah, Security was fun to figure out. For a while, I was seeing folks were like, Bungie was gatekeeping. Because, I mean, it, it would seem that way. Because if a team got past Atrix, they beat the game. on the you, Almost all of them on the day one, if they beat Atrix. If you didn't beat a tracks, then obviously you didn't get the clear. So it's really weird to have like the second encounter be like, "This is where men are born," kind of a thing. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, so. honestly, like I could see that perspective, but at the same time, I honestly just feel like it was more along the lines that because the arena was split into two different sections, uh, and the mechanics were. A little weird on day one 
I honestly feel like it was more just e tracks just happened to be the most mechanically difficult encounter of the raid. So I think that's kind of... I think the only part we didn't quite place together was doing damage with all three at once. Or trying to do the we weren't looking anything up. And that's the only thing I can't actually remember the next day if we had figured that one out. It was also not. just the survivability against the... the boss, too. Because if that boss got any shots on you, you were basically dead after the first volley of shots. Yeah. Because, like, Plasma on our team had the right side on top, which, you know, has hardly any cover against the boss. So trying to kill adds was a hard thing to do because. You're constantly trying to have to not die from the boss while trying to clear your servitor, get the scanner. Yeah, yeah, that was that was definitely like I I also feel like contest mode itself kind of um, ramped up that difficulty of that encounter to eleven because of the fact that you were under leveled for it. So, like you said, goalkeeper, like if the boss or even just any of the ads got like a few good hits on you, you were basically dead. Screw those shanks, though. Those shanks were, you, were the hardest add in that <laughs> encounter. Those besides shanks sucked. I know yeah. for gold. I was fine with the vandals and the yeah. drags, but the freaking shanks, they were tanky as yeah. crap. Well, we, we know when we for did that ones? next day, we were all pissed because it was easy as hell. We cleared everything at the first or second try. Like, ha, really, but me and Goldkeeper... But me and Goalkeeper were still the first in the clans to get through the clear. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. Yep, you guys were definitely the first ones to get in the clan. Uh, so, at the topic of the raids, we got a lot of stuff, so I'm trying to kind of keep it booking. So, folks, the, the controversy. Glad got himself in a whole bunch of a heap, <laughs> a heap of trouble on Twitter. Is Did you guys think this raid was too easy or too hard? Why or why not? That's Whoever wants to go first can go ahead and just say your name and then go for it. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm going to go first. This one. Okay. Well, I think it's uh, it's a regular raid. I mean, it's not overly difficult. And uh, you've seen it. It has already been uh, done by three people or even I think it was down to two people doing it at the same time. But, you know. The glass I mean, and a three man fall is clear. It's uh, somebody also soloed a tracks. It's quite yeah, something. I mean, considering that uh, I don't remember anyone saying, "Oh, I soloed Sura Chi or Morgan or something like that." When with Last Wish, or I soloed, um, you know, the dogs at Calluses or something like that, which you know makes it, you know, a little bit different considering it's a raid and the raid. From this season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun. Though. I. It is a lot of fun. I feel like what, um, in terms of difficulty wise, I feel like um, it's not difficult in terms of damage. I.e., after contest mode was taken off, damage wasn't that bad. I feel the difficulty of a lot of the encounters comes more from the mechanics behind them. Yeah. This is one of those raids where basically after the first couple encounters, like after Atrax, you could still have like an ad clear, couple ad clear people. But after that, everybody needs to know what a, a role they need to do is because there's three different things that could be deactivated. So you have to have two people per like augment so everybody needs to know at least one role of how to and how to do it so yeah yeah you can't have an act clear you can't have someone where they're like not for like that day one especially where they, they're not prepared or whatever like, oh, just clear ads like everyone had to be able to be like a, i know what i'm doing i guess in the third encounter if you do chaos mode you can have one act clear person chaos mode you don't have any assigned roles you just go in there oh yeah i got this role in I'm deactivated. Somebody pick it up. It's just... Oh, Jesus. No, thank you. That sounds like... That sounds like a recipe for disaster. Oh, no. We did it first try yesterday. <laughs> It'd be pretty what? fun. That, that I've actually wanted to do that with folks and people that I've been running with. Uh, 
I usually have someone that's learning, so it's just not a good idea. Back, One person didn't even pick up a single augment, and we did it first try. Uh, there's not too many raids where I'm already in the first week was like trying to do flawless clear, and uh, we're like all done with the title, other than the things that aren't released to the public yet to even do. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. speaking of the title, real quick, I was curious about because I saw um, Scarrow did a topic on this, but uh. I was curious about your thoughts on the uh, titles and such with this raid. So, like from specifically, or goalkeeper? I, I don't care anybody. Well, I'll goalkeeper. just go for it. so from. Uh, personally, I've already done like Church said. I've already done all of the triumphs that we could possibly do for the raid seal right now, except for the collections badge. I only have two more things for it, but. I've done like all the challenges you can do, get all the pikes, only use two terminals, kill all the servers at once. Yeah. I've already done all that stuff, so I'm just waiting on the challenges. And the secret triumph, which we already know what it is. But it's just so far this has been an easy raid seal to get. And I don't know how to feel about that. I'm well, fine with no flawless. That's no flawless I'm fine with, because you know, no flawless is just making it more accessible for more people to be able to get the seal. But if they're gonna do no, no flawless, they should have made it like the garden seal, where there is like a couple easy ones to do, but there's a couple hard ones that you need to know what the, like you need to know how to do the raid a lot. Like you need to have a lot of experience to do for like the last example, the last triumph you need to do for the raid seal for enlightened is that you need to kill 20 vex with plates, and that one would basically yep, no more plates on the ground except for one, and that one was really only doable by really experienced raiders. So I feel like there should have been more like that in this raid. Granted, we don't know what the raid challenges are, but... I've uh, I've made guesses. Do you want me to go ahead and so that way it's recorded as to what, what they are so we can go back later and be like, yep, yep. he was right. Sure. Okay, yeah, so I'm sure. going to pull it up real quick because I'm in, I'm in game right now anyways. All right, so I'm already calling it. Red Rover is going to be the first encounters type script security. It's going to be you uh, only have one scanner. Like you don't use the terminal to do your scanner. So they, they have to go through the door when the operator goes through. That's what I'm pretty sure it's going to be because Rover, Red, Red Rover. Red Rover makes me over. think that you can only have one operator since Red operator. See, we will see because the, the game Red Rover is sending someone back and forth though. So either if, if it's operator, it'd be like uh, you have to have more than one operator, which I'm not sure you can even do because the door is locked. And so that's oh, you can solo scanner. operator. We almost did it once with plasma. He died. He yeah. got all four of he got. No, we actually sold with one operator, not sold, but we did it with only one operator. We got all he died in the end, but he was able to get all four keypads on the second go around. Yeah. Um, and then I'll get through the other ones real quick. And then copies of copies, I'm guessing for Atrax 1, it's going to be you don't get rid of any in the airlock. So one phasing is going to be the easy way of doing it. Um, of all trades, is going to be for the descent. And everyone has to do a roll at least once. So instead of it being like your suppressor the whole time or backup suppressor, by the time it's over, you had to have done suppressor, uh, operator, and scanner, and maybe deposited a core. Then you got the core four, which is going to be for uh, the final boss. You're going to have to blow up all four and deposit all four cores for uh, damage. Yeah, phase. that, that one's too easy, and I think it's the easiest way you can actually uh, do the the last boss. For yeah. from experience, I want to make a yeah. slight change to the of all trades in my like what my thing is. I think it is that you don't have to if you have to do all every single roll. I feel like that would take a little bit longer. Granted, you could probably do it just switching every time, but I feel like is that you can only do each roll once. Not that everybody has to do every roll. Is that once you have a roll and it gets deactivated, you can't do that roll again? Is why I feel like it is. Oh, or so that. like if you had if you had scanner and you got deactivated, you couldn't pick up scanner again. Yes, it could uh, be that. Or the only reason I think it's going to be because there's at least six phases, right? And there's six people. So in theory, everyone would get to do it at least once, and you can put them in the deal without it being deactivated. So it'd be rather yeah, it's just a it's just a juggling competition at that point. Yeah, 
So that's, I, I, I still think it's going to be. But hey, we'll find out. That's why it's, I'm curious to see if I'm going to be right. Whenever the core four, out. I agree with you. having to do all four cores at once. The yeah, that does that. Just copies sounds. upon copies. I don't think it's going to be not putting any airlock in. It might be you have to put all four in at once into one airlock. I could see that more than trying to one phase it. So I feel like the one phase that that's not really a challenge. That's not a, a reasonably feasible challenge necessarily. I guess. I just feel yeah, like I, it's gonna be more. You just have to get all four copies into one airlock. Yeah, I, I could see that being more the challenge than trying to do um, the not putting it. And it, uh, it could be. So, I guess with the is there any yeah, this I, we want oh, to I add in before I yeah, go for I do the day one clear, agreeing with him and saying that um, the way that it was structured, especially based on the data that they gave, um, it was a quote unquote handout. Um, I did go into the numbers and how, to be honest, it wasn't a lot of people who even got it. So I'm not sure how you're it's like one point nine percent. Yeah, um, in total. The amount of people who actually got the day one emblem is 31,926 out of 1,677,156. So that's a very small number of people who actually ended up getting that emblem. Um, I think the number of folks were comparing was for the ones that tried. The ones that tried the raid was like 500,000, I think. Uh, Fallout Plays did like all the math of the ones that actually how many actually tried versus how many got it and comparing it to other ones and he's like yeah yeah it uh it was on par with completion rates it's just way more people got and way more people tried and right. that's the whole thing though oh sorry luke go ahead um for me i was not uh, a big fan of the they they ended up saying that you know it wasn't that they're trying to minimize people's efforts especially because we can all agree a tracks was the hardest part and that's where a lot of people ended up stopping at because it was getting long a lot of people s said that um they finished it uh well world's first finished it in about five hours and 30 minutes which good on them i don't know how they had that much coordination but kudos um we were 10 hours in still trying to figure out a tracks um we did minimal breaks and everything like that and we still just had to give up because people had to start getting off so i felt like saying that it was a handout was delegitimizing all that effort that those people who did complete it and did get past a tracks actually put in in order to get that and yeah. i understand and that you know day one is a prestigious event but the emblem itself in my eyes it's not the prestigious uh item that you get from it for me it's going to be the seal especially because of all the challenges and things like that um i'm still fairly new i've only had about no more than 20 raid clears in total so i'm not looking to rush to get to all those seals because i know i'm not really that good at raiding um, other than Deep Stone Crypt, because it's pretty easy um, in my mind. But I just feel like if you want to have a feeling about handouts, the day one emblem is not something to have a gripe about. Yeah, well, then there's also the flip side, because uh, like folks like us who, like, like, I know a goalkeeper on our team, at least three or four out of the six, like, worked our asses off 
to have all the mods, the best pot optimized loadouts, to have multiple options of like Anarchy, Xeno, and everything else we possibly could. Um, we worked our tails off to be as ready as possible. And so then there's the flip side where people were like, well, if you're saying it was a handout and I didn't get it, then I guess I just really suck. And I know there's going to be toxic, toxic a-holes out there like, yep, just get good. But there's something to be said too for even just trying to put in the work an effort to like our goalkeeper and I'm, I'm and uh, I, our team I think we stopped after like 14 ish hours I think and it's mostly because it's like hey guys like unless we're down to look stuff up there's no way we're on like 10 hours of eight tracks and we got two encounters at least left to go like, there's no way we're going to be able to beat this in 24 hours if we're not going to look stuff up and then we end up just kind of deciding to call it for mm -hmm. similar reasons and so that's, that's probably where other people are getting mad too is because they're like I worked so hard or like I guess Bad was responding to one person who had mentioned, like, if you even have one teammate on this raid who can't hold their own or didn't prep like they should have or whatever, and it screws it for everybody. Whereas mm -hmm. past raids, you could have one slacker, and it wouldn't have been that big of a deal as far as right. day one goes, because they could, well, it's act clear. Or just stay alive, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that, that's probably the, the other side. This is I've been trying for a day one for several years now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, never gotten it. Uh, so, anyways, that's that's probably. I guess we should probably end the glad thing with us. Uh, definitely think anyone giving them death threats is a dick or any kind of bodily or mental harm. Like that's overkill. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. That is him, like, very overkill. Because like, glad makes him his persona seem like an incredibly tough, mock, uh, basically asshole, which is. Maybe why I don't get as many views because that seems to be the, what people watch when it comes to streamers. <laughs> uh, and I'm just not. You that do interested. you, Church. You yeah. do but, you. Don't try but, to copy uh, someone else. Well, for someone like him to be like, hey, that was too much. I have to take a break. I can only imagine it must have been. If his uh, actual self is like the persona he puts on stream, it must have been brutal. Whatever it was that people were sending him. <laughs> yeah. Right, like the guy's known for wanting to sexualize hamsters and like shove them up his ass and stuff, and like tell people I'm get good or whatever. What? That, no, that's his whole thing. That's his whole thing. Is he like he constantly tweets about hamsters and uh, at least, uh no one's perfect. All right, does anyone have anything else they wanted to add about their liking Beyond Light and uh, or not like whatever anything else? Uh, I would like to add one thing. I like that the new seals aren't as RNG based as like Harbinger or something. It's, yeah, it's more that's triumph hunting. I just remember yeah. last season I finally went for Harbinger. I had to farm out thirty plus clears of altars of sorrow just to get one ghost. Wow. Or how about or how about uh, Wayfarer? I don't remember Wayfarer as much because I got it super fast. Cause I got so... lucky with all my drops. Yeah, well, that's the thing is that it was super heavy RNG based because you needed yep. to get, you needed to get all of the Mercury weapons, you needed to get all of the Mars stuff, you needed to get all the Dreaming City stuff, and all of that stuff was mainly RNG based on whether or not you got it. Yep. So. Mm. Also, the shit from Shattered Throne for Curse Breaker that was a bane of my existence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't remind. <laughs> But yeah, no, this one's more, yep, do these triumphs, you get the emblems, the ships, and the whatever else you need. There's no RNG-based stuff for most of it. Yeah, which is nice. It allows it allows for more people to be able to um, reliably be able to get the seal if they want it. And have fun in the process. And have what? Instead of just grinding away? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And one of the Triumphs is well, Titan Hunt, Triumph War, but you... You're going to have to do a lot of grinding when you get to that Warden seal, let me tell you, because it's just kills <laughs> on kills on kills. And yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I grinded Shiro Chi for two hours yesterday to get all the weapon kills. Oh, oh just, yeah, I forgot you I, can still uh, do that. I did it while doing Pinnacles. I was just going through, just playing stuff, and just using it, like, only the weapons until they were done. Uh... <laughs> Yes, yeah, so there's still quite a bit of grinding. Yeah, the RNG thing is more or less gone. These trophies are a unique thing too, where you have like that that camp. Although, yeah, oh, I like yeah. It. Oh, although it's kind of weird. Of is uh, I wish they were more obvious, because then you could bring in some like 
stranger or a new light player and be like, oh, oh, look at my camp. Instead, I think they just walk in and be like, huh, that's just a lot of stuff around. Yeah. They come to computer. I don't know what any of this is. this supposed to be cool? <laughs> I don't know. I got Tanix's head in there, so I, I think that's cool. Oh, yeah. He's got a lot of stuff in there. Movie. He's coming around. Yeah. He's a shank. Yeah, mine's uh, pretty full, too. Shanix the perfected. <laughs> yeah, this is like this is like the third time we fought Tanix. Third time we like, uh third time we've killed Tanix. Cade killed him before. Like, how many well, more times can we kill like this dude like... before he just doesn't before he just won't come back? Uh never he's a robot now. The he theory next like, time is he's gonna come back as a Siva, so ask the Siva. <laughs> he already came back with Siva before though. Taken then. He's coming back at something. It's a theory. Oh my fucking god. It's more of a joke. Not a theory, but... <laughs> I hope it's more of a joke. Uh... I don't hate Tanix to kill him as much as we have in the history. Right? I'm pretty sure we've killed him more like, than any other boss. Like, even more than Nocturne. For, for a dude that they keep having this destroy over and over, it, we don't have that much of a rivalry. Like, I feel like, you know how every once in a while, like, two schools, like, you'll have, like, a rivalry with another school, but the other school isn't aware of that rivalry. So it's just really that yeah. one school is like, yeah, fuck you. And, and I feel like uh, Tanix is like, yeah, screw you guys. And he keeps trying to kill us. And we're just like, oh, my God, this is so dumb. Stay down, you. And we're just <laughs> like, it's like at this point, it's like when we show up for him, it's the boss music. Like as opposed to like when we show up, we get his boss music because we get the other way around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we show up, it should just be like, like when we show up, it should be like, Duh, like whatever it is for us. And he's like, all right, here we go. And it's like, God damn it. All I'm picturing now is just Tanix with like five other fallen guys. And it's just like, God damn it, guys! How many more? How many more times are we gonna wipe against these guardians? They're like in a circle, <laughs> kind of like a little. They're drinking their G fuel, or in my case, War Games by Redcon One. The link is down below <laughs> for my affiliate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't even know how many people would, would uh, watch it this long. We're about an hour now. So, is there anything you guys want to add in before we wrap it up? This is gonna take a long time to upload, but it'll be fun. I well, think I'm good. I'm done. Same. Same here. All right. All right. Well, in that case, make sure everyone subscribes to the channel for more videos. I know right now it's just a Church of Caboose channel, but you never know. If enough people subscribe off of these and like, oh, my God, we want this stuff, it could become its own thing. Never know. If you want to meet these guys and play with all of them, get Ray Clears, whatever, join our clan by joining the eventual Discord server. There's Xbox, PlayStation, and PC, although I think almost all of us in this particular uh, recording are on Xbox. So lose on PC. We yeah. Oh, lose PC. Lose PC. Yeah. Oh, then Balto's in here. He's Xbox too. He just showed up. What's up, Balto? So we're gonna go ahead and end this. If you want to support the channel, ways to do so are down below. But the free and cheapest way, because it's free, would be to like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel while commenting something down below. You guys have a great week and happy grinding, y'all.